Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the end-to-end -end automation for your data pipeline session. My name is Dave Kellermans and I'll be your host for the next 15 minutes. Before we get started on actually looking at data pipelines, I want you to imagine something with me. Imagine you're typing a query into Google and instead of getting instantaneous results, Google is telling you that they'll need two weeks to get you access to the data. I know, really hard to imagine, but in a way, slow is considered a new downtime. When a service is down, we all notice there's a business impact, but slowness has really that very same impact. If you are not delivering the best customer experience you can, your customer is gonna to choose to work with you, one of your competitors, and when they do, you become the victim of customer churn. So waiting for two weeks to get answers to a question, really hard to imagine. And yet, when we talk about data pipelines, it really has very similar traits. This is based on some recent surveys, and I think the first bullet is really interesting. More than half of the organizations that were surveyed need more than two weeks to create a new data source. And I think that's a very typical pain of a traditional data warehouse. Many organizations have a lot of hard-coded processes, but these hard-coded processes, while working, lack the level of agility that's required to be a digital business. Maybe you're familiar with this. The business will ask you for a new report to make some really important decisions on some marketing actions. But you don't have the data yet. You need a new data source. And if it takes multiple weeks to create that data source, you're really delivering poor service to the business because while they do get the information they need eventually, they'll probably get it much too late. And as a consequence, and this should not be a surprise, the same survey says that organizations are spending 80% of their time getting access to the data versus using the data. And we see that a lot in IT organizations. Just the balance between keeping the lights on and innovating is just not good. And then the last consequence, and probably not less important, is that IT organizations are struggling with artificial intelligence. 40% have difficulties with data preparation, sourcing, and or the management of data. And without efficient access to data, how can you have machine learning or artificial intelligence? So the question is, why are so many companies running into these issues? Now, having worked in automation for over 20 years, we believe that automation is really the key to successful data management. But not automation is created equal. And the figures you see on your screen right now, I find them really interesting. They come from a recent EMA survey, but more than half of the respondents to that survey report they're using actually a mix of automation tools. They're using native tools like cron, Windows schedulers. They have open source schedulers, think here Uzi or Airflow. Flow. They have a set of ETL tools that come with their own schedulers, and then some of them have even diverse workload automation solutions. But what it all means is they really don't have end-to-end -end control of the processes they manage. Even with some opportunistic automation of some of the processes, they still have manual synchronization points and manual handovers. And with that, very typically, they also see a higher rate of failure. And with the lack of visibility and control, what that really does is it impacts their agility to drive the needed numbers of changes on processes that they have no or very little control on. The two middle figures are more about the visual impact of that or the visible impact of that situation. 40% of the companies have difficulties with application modernization and processes that drive these digital transformation initiatives. Most of them don't really start from scratch. They need to integrate these new technologies with their legacy systems. They need to automate the hybrid processes coming from the mainframe all the way to the cloud. And then in addition, in order to improve the customer experience, they now need to leverage big data, machine learning, and more advanced analytics to make that happen. 
That's probably why we see this noticeable result of the survey, which is depicted in the last number. 80% of the companies are now considering to improve their automation strategies. They're actually looking for ways to get more centralized control for their automated processes. But let's say you don't manage your automation strategies here. What are some of the consequences? So speaking with our customers, we realize that a lot of them run big data environments in total or near isolation from the rest of the enterprise business processes. And of course, it's easy to understand the reasons, right? Different technologies, different skills, different teams, but running big data like a silo has a significant impact on the ability to innovate. And that might sound strange in the beginning, but why is that? Simply because you need to integrate big data into your DevOps initiatives to avoid this slowdown. The reality is that the data pipelines have to be automated along with the continuous delivery pipeline. In fact, if you are doing DevOps today to improve the customer experience you deliver, then very soon you should be considering doing data ops. And with that, you need automation that actually goes beyond the silos. The other part, which isn't on the slide, is actually also that siloed automation has a big impact on scalability. Many companies will actually find it difficult to scale with the volume of data and the number of data sources. The second consequence a lot of customers see is the speed, because data scientists struggle to get access to the data they need when they need it. They also find that managing data flows is way too complex, and they always need the IT experts to help them. So once again, this does impact innovation, but it also makes it difficult to keep operational costs under control. Because when you always need to involve the IT teams, then it's really hard to manage the data underneath it. The last effect or another effect we found or consequence we found is the result of poor visibility and control and data flows. When you have manual operations, manual handovers, they really increase the risk of compliance issues. Just think about all the data protection regulations, just as GDPR, CCPA, HIPAA, and all the other ones. How can you ensure compliance with your data if you can't manage secure operations, trace who's doing what and when he's doing it? With that said, what should you do? And I would love to talk about one of our customers that I had the pleasure with working over the years. This is actually a utility company in the US. They do provide electricity and gas to millions of, of households and companies. And just like globally probably happening a lot, they massively deployed smart meters to record the consumption of the users. Typically, a smart meter records hourly, sometimes even more frequently, and once a day, they report their data readings into a central uh, system. But implementing a smart meter is only useful if you can make use of the large amount of data create valuable insights to the company. And one of the main objectives that the company has had was to improve the meter to cash process. The problem they had was to integrate the legacy corporate systems with the meter to cash process and scaled it up to the 86 million readings that the smart meters produce every day. Of course, the solution was really to automate the meter to cash process end to end. And using Broadcom, they've been able to automate that mix of data movement and data processing. As a result, really, the entire meter to cash process now runs about 70% faster with greater reliability. But that's not the only benefit they got from automating their data pipeline. They also produced seamless access to data and have new digital services for their customers. Real-time monitoring of energy consumption, billing alerts, forecasting, all that available on the customer portal. So really, automating the data pipeline was a win-win situation. On the one side, they're getting the cash sooner. On the other side, they're delivering innovative services to their customers. So with that said, what are really the key requirements for efficient data pipelines? 
what did we learn helping a lot of our customers first of all collaboration is really essential the different teams tools infrastructures all these need coordination not surprisingly automation can bring them all together and help you bridge technology and functioning silos of course when you become fully digital you cannot afford managing disconnected silos or disconnected data the second requirement is really to accelerate the time to value from data. Your customers, whether they're internal or external, cannot wait for information. This, if you think about, was the opening slide of the session. So it is crucial you automate operations that require manual efforts. By automating data pipelines end-to-end, -end, you reduce the potential for human error, you improve the data quality, and you accelerate the data flows. The third requirement is about offering self-services to data specialists, data scientists, data engineers rely still too much on IT operations. They need IT operations to get access to the data, to provision compute environments, IT services, to deploy their work to production. The reality is they need IT way too much. In fact, without automation, you create a bottleneck and you slow down the delivery of value from data. The fourth requirement shouldn't really be surprising in the context of digital businesses. Companies need to capture, store, and process the data as it arrives in any volume. And they have to distribute information to downstream applications, sometimes in real time or near real time. This is a context where traditional data tools are just simply not efficient because you need to manage the mix of data movements and data processing most of the time within the same flow. So automation again can help you improve the integration between data flows and traditional enterprise processes. And the last requirement should really be easy to understand. You have more and more regulations around data protections that drive your business. So you need to set up strong governance on complex distributed processes. And automation can help you create building blocks that you can reuse in these data flows. What it means is better standardization and better control of your processes. So what you're looking for is really end-to-end -end automation of your data flow. So let's look a little bit into more detail what Broadcom can offer here. The goal is to let you automate all the steps to transform source data into valuable insight, capturing data from all the endpoints and application, processing and transferring the data securely, ingesting data into big data stores like Hadoop, integrating with third-party tools all along the data pipeline, enabling self-service to make data actionable for the data scientists, provisioning test and or compute infrastructure, and then deploying models and code for doing analytics. The Broadcom solutions let you automate data pipelines end-to-end -end. as a result by orchestrating tools, team infrastructure, and data Broadcom enables you to drive that continuous analytics I was talking about earlier. As a conclusion, three good reasons to trust Broadcom for your automation. First of all, workflow automation. Broadcom enables data scientists with self-service and visual workflow that simplify the access to data. A broad ecosystem. When you select an automation solution, you need to ensure that it covers your technology end-to-end. -end. Otherwise, you end up with another tool in the mix. Broadcom delivers automation for data tools, code, and infrastructure. And also, last but not least, to scale. Because digital future depends on automation, so you need to build your future on a solution that is scalable and that can grow with the business demand. I hope you found today's session interesting. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the other sessions.